Five, the Cuban Missile Crisis started 62 years ago today. It's when we came close to a nuclear conflict with the Soviet Union. We spoke with the last living crew member from our area who played a role in that crisis. He says it wasn't the only time we came close to World War III. An American flag blows in Frank DeLugas' front yard long after his service to his country has passed. I was on Crew 34 then uh, at a Nolan Missile Silo, and I was the MFT, the Missile Facilities Technician. I took care of everything on that site except the missile itself. And that was a dangerous and important job for the 23-year-old now in his 80s. He says he's the last living crew member of the 12 Atlas F missile silos in our area around Dias Air Force Base. The Cuban Missile Crisis started October 16th of 1962. Russia is building missile sites. Both medium and intermediate range missiles are seen on the ground. Jet bombers are being uncrated. In one giant step, Russia is giving Cuba an offensive nuclear capability that can strike at the heart of the United States. We were in what they call a category two, which is a, a yellow alert. We were on a yellow alert all the time. So that meant the silo had to be ready to launch a missile at any second. It was a 13-day confrontation between the United States and the Soviet Union during the Cold War. The two superpowers came close to nuclear conflict when American deployments of nuclear missiles in Italy and Turkey were matched by Soviet deployments in Cuba. And the increased alert status of the United States military forces worldwide, including the alert status of the Strategic Air Command. As the coded orders go out, all wing command posts step up their alert. That was a scary part for a couple of weeks till they got it over with. But the worst day that I remember that we came pretty close to annihilating the gene population of the world was on uh, November 22nd. DeLuga says we came close to firing those missiles again a little more than a year later after President John F. Kennedy was assassinated. He says at first America thought Russia was behind it. But we were up at, in a red alert then. We had the missiles actually up out of the silos. I raised the missile up out of the silos and was topping it with liquid oxygen. He says if the United States launched, Russia would have fired back. And so if Russia had launched, what would that have meant for Abilene? Well, probably a big giant crater. I mean, <laughs> if their nuclear weapons were as sound as ours were, which they were at the time, they, they, would, have, they would have completely obliterated Abilene in this area around here. Attack fighters positioned at Florida bases. Tense times for the country, and especially for a young man in his early 20s, right in the middle of it all. Moments he still thinks about more than six decades later. When you think back, how thankful are you that you didn't have to, to fire off one of those missiles? Well, I, I'm very thankful, because like I say, uh, anybody with a brain in his head and feeling for humanity would know that, you know, what, what, what you're about to do would destroy all of the human gene on the face of the earth. Our thanks to Mr. DeLugas, and you can find more pictures and video of that Nolan missile silo, silo on our website. That's KTXS.com.